SRE? A developer? A quality engineer who wants to tackle the challenge of improving reliability in your DevOps? You can enable your DevOps for reliability with Chaos Native. Create your free account at Chaos Native Litmus Cloud. Hello, everybody. This is Felicia Day, and I'm here to help explain what the heck incident management is. I'm going to paint you a picture. It is Friday, 5 p.m. You're thinking about what kind of pizza to order. You're thinking about what you're going to binge that is very bingeable. And then suddenly, you hear it. The dreaded page. Oh my gosh, the server's down. Customers can't log in. Someone, someone dropped the database. Now what? Everything from this point on is incident management. Now you have to remember what the process is, who to call, when to update the status page, and all of that manual work that no one wants to do on Friday at 5 p.m. Particularly me. Not to worry though, we built Fire Hydrant to handle all of this. From declaring an incident either from a page to declaring it via our API or from Slack. From tracking, communicating, retrospective, all the way through, we have built Fire Hydrant to handle all of it. Uh, so that helps you get back to resolution quickly and back to your weekend. Many modern app developers own running the code they write in production. To develop new features, they test their code against a spec. After they ship, they often see bizarre failures and have to guess where the problems might be. Systems fail in perplexing ways. Behavior in production is unpredictable. Even with monitoring and tracing tools, it's not easy to see what's going on across distributed systems, let alone understand why. Honeycomb allows you to capture any event inside your code. Compare raw events across any number of dimensions. Find every needle in the haystack, no matter how deep or hidden. Observability helps developers see how their software really behaves in production. With Honeycomb, you don't have to guess. You know. Sign up today and try Honeycomb for free. Guess less and no more. This is Commodore a Kubernetes native product that helps dev and ops teams troubleshoot more efficiently. Commodore is designed to give everyone on the R&D team the context they need when an issue happens so they can quickly identify what changes occurred and what was affected. Or simply put, we make their on-call duty painless and efficient so they can get back to what they do best, innovating. This is the main screen. It's a complete overview of all of your system services. You can filter the data to zoom into a particular group that interests you. For example, let's zoom in to a specific namespace. Cool, now let's go back to the original screen. Now let's dive deep into a specific service. For each service, we construct a coherent view, including relevant deploys, config changes, and alerts. It includes a full timeline of the service's activities and metadata. On the left, you can see relevant tags, activity, and useful links. Now let's check the timeline. The last event was a deploy event. For each deploy event, Commodore collects both the infra changes and the app changes, giving you a unified view over the deploy process. We can check and see what changed in Kubernetes up to the level of the Kubernetes diff. We can also view what changed in GitHub. The timeline even includes relevant health changes and alerts. On the right side, you can see related services. We can choose and add events from those services into our current view. Oh, now it seems the service had a bad deploy, so let's ask for help over Slack. You can use Commodore via Slack. Simply write backslash Commodore in order to get information regarding your system for both changes and alerts. You can filter out to a specific service, team, or cluster. Commodore is here to help you gain control over your system. To learn more about how we are simplifying troubleshooting for teams everywhere, check us out at www.commodore.com. As your team and cloud infrastructure grow, it becomes difficult to manage access to so many virtual machines and cloud applications. You may need to run your applications on untrusted networks, on the edge, or even on IoT devices. Providing secure access to SSH nodes, Kubernetes clusters, and web applications means juggling multiple complex and proprietary tools that don't always play nicely together. 
It gets even more challenging if you consider a revolving door of engineers and contractors who need convenient and secure access. And as you grow, staying compliant with new and existing regulations can present its own set of problems. Sounds like you'll need to deploy an army of security engineers. Well, you don't have to. Already trusted by industry leaders, Teleport makes it easy to access your cloud infrastructure and applications, keeping track of your authorizations, and helping you ace your audit. Teleport makes it easy to give your engineers and users the right access for the right duration. Teleport authenticates through your identity provider, offering role-based access to your servers and applications that expires automatically. Teleport gives you activity logging, session recording, and role-based access control, regardless of where your servers and applications are running. Plus, it's designed to be compliant with the toughest regulations. You get zero trust access for SSH, Kubernetes, and cloud applications running anywhere in the world, from your cloud account and on-premise servers, to self-driving vehicles and edge devices. Find out how Teleport can secure your infrastructure, provide access to cloud applications, ensure visibility into user behavior, and cure your compliance headaches for good. Teleport is easy to install, and best of all, it's open source. Download it today. Teleport, zero trust security that doesn't get in the way. Hello and welcome to Conf42 Site Reliability Engineering 2021. We've got almost 50 great sessions, so let's get right into it. But before we go, I would like to invite you to join our Discord server to have a chat with other attendees and speakers. And I would like to announce our partners and sponsors. Blameless and Cortex, Platinum Sponsors, Chaos Native, the video sponsor, Fire Hydrant, Honeycomb.io, K6, Commodore, and Teleport, Gold Sponsors, Silver Sponsors, Bronze Sponsors, Balsamic, the diversity sponsor, and media partners. We opened the conference with a keynote by Emily Arnott and Christina Tan from Blameless. Elephant in the Blameless War Room. Both Emily and I are passionate about making Blameless culture work for engineers and business leaders. Our talk will break down why leaders have blameful behavior, we'll empathize with their goals and show them how they can be achieved blamelessly, we'll address their concerns for the incident, the engineers involved, and your customers' trust. We both met leaders responsible for software reliability in Fortune 500 companies who don't believe in blameless culture. They would ask us point blank, somebody still has to get fired, right? And Emily and I thought long and hard about this and distilled our answers in this talk. We're very excited to share with you how companies can be blamelessly accountable. Hope to see you there. Evangelizing the SRE mindset. Building a culture of reliability and ownership is the second keynote by Cristina Buenajora Bustamante, founding engineer at Cortex. Hi, welcome. We're building a tool to help teams manage their microservices and define best practices across their organizations. And my talk is about this. I'll start out covering the changing role of the SREs at leading technology companies, and then go through some best practices to enable engineering organizations to deliver reliable, performant, and secure systems. Uma Mukara, CEO at Chaos Native, is here to address improving resilience through continuous SLO validation using Chaos Engineering. In this CON42 SRE conference, I'll be speaking about how SREs can use chaos engineering to do continuous validation of service level objectives and thereby improve the resilience of the systems they're operating on. Coming up next, we have an insightful keynote by Robert Ross, CEO of Fire Hydrant. What we're gonna talk about are five tips on pragmatic incident response. So pragmatic being the key word here, there's a whole swath of things that you can do to improve incident response, but we're just going to talk about some relatively easy things that you can start to push into the company today uh, to help you with your incident response and management. Alasia Naiden, 
team lead at Honeycomb.io will showcase some SLI negotiation tactics for engineers. How to empower developers to troubleshoot K8s independently is the next keynote by ETL Schwartz, CTO of Commodore. And the talk will be focused on how to give tools and processes to less technical people when they struggle to work with Kubernetes and to troubleshoot Kubernetes. I think this talk is a must if you try to offload some of the Kubernetes ops burden to less technical people. Alan Weinkurt, solutions engineer at Teleport, is here to tell you what is better for SSH access, keys or certs. In my session, we're going to talk about SSH keys versus certificates, and why should I care as an SRE? I talk to engineers across the world that are managing access to systems using public-private keys, when I think there's a better way by using SSA certificates. So hope you can come join my talk. Looking forward to it. Thank you. In the last keynote, please join me in welcoming Gunnar Grosch, developer advocate at Amazon Web Services. I am super excited to join the SRE edition of Conf42. In my session, we'll look at how automated chaos engineering experiments can help us cover a more extensive set of experiments than what we can cover manually, and how it allows us to verify our assumptions over time as unknown parts of the system changes. I hope you'll enjoy it. The observability track opens up with Parvin Khan, senior QA consultant at ThoughtWorks. I'm going to talk about peek into observability from testers lens and I'll be sharing my story of how our engineering team started um, our first steps into adopting the culture of observability. I will also talk about how observability can help and support testers and how testers can add value while building observability into the application. Go global or go home. Monitoring your platform from multiple locations is the next session by Andrei Danilov, platform engineer at Typeform. Hey, thanks for joining my session today at Conf42, where I plan to help you, fellow engineers, set up from scratch a regional monitoring strategy that can help your company scale globally. We'll be talking about alerts, ownership, and everything that you need to know in order to start on, on the right foot with this topic. Dave McAllister, Senior Technical Evangelist at Splunk, is here to discuss the Murphy's Laws of Observability. Most of y'all are familiar with Murphy's Law. Whatever can go wrong, will go wrong. And if there's anything that's a better description of our lives in SRE space, I don't know what it's going to be. However, there are lots of Murphy's Laws that are out there. And what I'm going to do during my talk is talk about how the new world of observability, of deep data and deep insights, applies in the light of Murphy's Laws. In short, you'll find out something about how uh, the world fits together um, with all the problems that can exist. Uh, and some ways that observability might help you uh, uh, get the best of Murphy. Observability in serverless applications will be explained by Ozio Mauzegua, Solutions Architect at AWS. Hello, everyone. In my day job, I work with our SMB customers in the UK, and I'm also part of our front end and mobile specialist team. In this session, we'll be talking about observability in serverless applications. Sujit Samuel, Principal Software Engineer at Ericsson, will talk about system state clustering using eBPF data. Uh, eBPF as a technology is uh, crucial in understanding many of the system intricacies without uh, too much of a code. We will be discussing about some of the aspects of eBPF, some of the aspects of machine learning, uh, one or two open source softwares that use eBPF, and we'll also look at some potential use cases uh, of eBPF. I have been working with a lot of customers who are uh, very much interested in uh, employing or using eBPF capabilities into their systems and plug into those uh, certain execution points and understand a lot about the reliability of the systems. I believe EBPF is the right fit to do that. And uh, via this presentation, I'll be sharing with you some of my experiences on implementing some of those use cases which use EBPF as the core functionality. Investigating performance issues in microservices architecture with distributed tracing is the next session by Dotan Horowitz, product evangelist at logs.io. On SRE 2021, I'll share the journey that led us to start using distributed tracing in handling performance issues in our system. And I'll also give practical tips on how you can start with distributed tracing and how to effectively use it in your performance investigations. See you on my talk. Suraj Muralidharam, Senior DevOps Consultant at AWS, is here to show you how to improve observability. 
In my session, we will be discussing about improving the observability and the operational efficiency of your workloads once they have been deployed to cloud. We open up the processes track with reducing trauma in production with SLOs and chaos engineering. Introducing Julie Gunderson, Senior Reliability Advocate at Gremlin, and Mandy Walls, DevOps Advocate at PagerDuty. Mandy and I are really excited to be here with you today because we actually both worked together at PagerDuty. And now at different organizations, we really see ways that you can combine some of these practices to make for really reliable organizations. Chris Riley, Senior Technology Advocate at Splunk, will talk about incident response, incident management, and alerts. Where do they fit in CloudOps? I'm very excited that you're joining me at my session today where I'm going to talk about the difference between alerts, incident response, and incident management. Which, by the way, if you just heard that and you thought that they're all the same, then you've come to the right place because they are not. So in my talk, I'll be covering why they're different and why, with the nature of cloud native applications, it's so important to adopt an incident response strategy. Shift left your performance testing is the next talk by Kari Krishnan, CEO of Polarizer Technologies. Is your team identifying performance issues late in their development cycle? Is this leading to a lot of unplanned work in your sprints? Performance testing has largely been a higher environment activity. By higher environments, I mean staging, pre-production, production replica, or maybe even production. Because of this, it is hard to validate performance improvements or identify issues early in the development cycle. Would it not be great if we could run performance tests on lower environments, or maybe even our local machines, so that we can iterate quickly? By participating in this session, you will be learning strategies to overcome the challenges associated with applying shift left to performance testing. Josh Armitage, AWS Practice Lead at Contina, is here to show you how to lean product development through SLOs. Today, I'm going to talk through how you can use SLO and SRE to really expedite your product development flow. We're we'll talking through how you can build out an AWS landing zone that's really lean and serves your customers in the best way possible. That means you're not wasting time golden plating features you don't need to. So come on, let's dive in and let's go through it. One metric to rule them all is the next session by Yishai Berry, CTO of LinearDB. I'm going to talk about why that is the one metric you should begin with when measuring your dev team in the dev process. I'm going to go into the details of what's in cycle time and how to win, how to really improve across all the parts of cycle time. And finally, I'm going to talk about why measuring and putting metrics in a dashboard is a good first step, but it's not enough and what you can do after you've done that to really help your dev team improve and become an elite performing dev team. Marco Coulter, technical evangelist at techwhisper.com, will teach you how to avoid Goodhart's law. The concepts of SLI and SLO and error budget are there to balance risk and reward. Risk around acceptable rate of change and reward being the business success and customer contentment. So using such metrics to punish teams for exceeding budgets or force acceptance of change within the business is a path to failure. Right? So my session is going to give you some hints for success around how to set SLIs, SLOs, SLAs, how to think about them, and also around negotiation and how to get successful cooperation from the people that you work with. Hope to see you there. Self-service PR-based automated Terraform is the first talk in the tools track. Introducing Andrew Kirkpatrick, staff engineer at Partnerstack. Maintaining your whole infrastructure using Terraform and reusable modules makes most of our lives a little bit easier. But what if those less familiar with DevOps want to create or update resources? In those cases, you're either going to have to train and enable people to use Terraform, or you're probably going to have to handle those requests yourself. However, what if you could offload execution of those changes to a centralized tool somewhere and just review the code and output for review? Atlantis, Terraform Cloud, or M0 can act as a PR-based feedback loop for a hosted Terraform executor to make your lives just a little bit easier and hopefully reduce day-to-day -to -day toil. Philippe Puris, Principal Security Engineer at TalkDesk, will help you keep your code safe. Today, we're going to talk about how you can keep your code and safe during the development path. I've been working as Principal Security Engineer at TalkDesk, and I'm Security Research at Senha Segura. In the next session, please join me in welcoming Rob Richardson, 
developer advocate at Cyro. Hi, welcome to comp42.com's SRE 2021 conference. We get to talk about level up your DevOps with GitHub Actions and Kubernetes. Instant self-contained development environments for everyone is the next topic presented by Ishai Jacobi, CTO at Lifecycle. In my session, I'm going to explore the different challenges and frustrations developers experience when they engage with a new code base. More importantly, I'm going to present some code examples and demos that showcase how we can solve these issues and create an amazing developer onboarding experience simply using containers and common open source tools. Devan Ahmed, developer advocate at Red Hat, is here to show you how to deploy N applications to N clusters using Argo CD application set. For the last seven years or so, I've helped customers DevOps journeys both at IBM and at Red Hat. As a developer advocate focusing on open source projects like Tekton and Argo CD, as well as enterprise products like OpenShift Pipelines and OpenShift GitOps, I work as a two-way feedback mechanism between the engineering teams and the external customers or community. From this talk, you can expect the necessary resources to get you started on Argo CD application set and how these two can help your large scale application deployment through templating and automation. I look forward to seeing you. How to use voice AI for incident reporting, monitoring, and alerts is the next session by Arthur Grishkevich, citizen developer advocate at Dasha AI. Hi, everybody. That's Funky Wallpaper. And I will be talking to you about a pretty funky topic at this year's SRE conference, how you can use voice AI to get notified of incidents to handle those incidents over the phone while you're away from your machine. If that sounds intriguing, I will see you on September 30th at 5 p.m. GMT, 12 p.m. Eastern. I'm going to have some fun and learn a few new things. It's time for the culture track. Ajuna Kiaruzi, Developer Relations at Datadog. Hello, I'll be talking about sustainable instant management for happy SRE teams. This is thinking about instant management in a way that makes sure that your teams who are your instant responders are ready and able to do the process again and again without being burnt out. Thanks for joining in. Don't panic. Effective incident response is the next talk by Quintessence Anx, developer advocate at PagerDuty. Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great conference. My name is Quintessence and I'm here to talk to you about effective incident response. Austin King, the founder of OpsReal.com, is here to present some games his team plays to improve on incident response. Ineffective incident response can cause longer outages, more lost revenue, and lost customer trust. What we're gonna look at together is what are the skills that we need as a team, such as team cohesion, resiliency, and some of the higher level skills that we use during incident response, and break those down to find different party games that you can play and practice with your team. For example, I've worked with a few companies that are using Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes to work on clear communication. Looking forward to seeing you at my talk. Fixing broken windows dealing with legacy systems, poor quality, and gaps is the next lecture by Dmitry Vinik. I'm a developer advocate on the Facebook open source team. Today I'll be talking about legacy systems and how to fix them. Best practices track opens up with, for the second time today, Mandy Walls. Improve your automation to reduce toil. Part of my job at PagerDuty is helping organizations improve their processes for always-on production systems, as well as incident response. One of the key skill sets that increases success for teams working in complex environments is being intentional with automation. So you know, many of us have been automating tasks since forever, but often in a more ad hoc fashion. My talk will cover some of the things you and your team can be thinking about when automating work in modern environments, like how to train new folks when lots of work is automated, uh, what goals to attach to your automation, and what kinds of tasks are key targets to be automated for your environment. Automation really is a key for success in modern IT systems. So we'll look at some of the ways you can be more confident in your automation and take those boring, repetitive tasks off your to-do list. Building near real-time, fully managed analytics solution with 
Minimum to no coding is the next topic introduced by Shubankar Sumar, Senior Solutions Architect at AWS. In today's session, I'll discuss and demo on how you can leverage AWS products and services to architect a near real-time analytic solution with minimum to no coding for an e-commerce website while an option to integrate with pre-existing data sources. Dmitry Chuiko, Senior Performance Engineer at Billsoft, is here to tell you a story. Chasing the Grail. There are few interesting ways how to make our Java services more effective nowadays. And I'm going to talk how to help them stay reliable in all that interesting cases. Engineering Reliable Mobile Applications is the next lecture by Pranjal Deo, Engineering Program Manager at Google. In today's day and age, many services are being accessed by users through a client app on mobile. What's the point of five nines of server reliability if the productionized app is unreliable for users? This talk explains the importance, challenges, and best practices of client-side reliability. Thanks for joining. Stefano Doni, CEO of Akamas, is here to tell you why you should let machines optimize the machines. Do you want to learn about a new approach based on machine learning techniques that makes it possible to automatically tune system configurations and that allows SRE teams to ensure service performance, efficiency, and reliability while reducing the time. During my session, I'm going to show you how this new machine learning-based approach works by optimizing a microservice application running on Kubernetes. Pitfalls of infrastructure as code and how to avoid them. Tim Davis, DevOps Advocate at Envo. Some of this may be great for anybody who's new and hasn't done anything in infrastructure as code, or even if you've taken the first few steps, maybe there's a few things you haven't thought of yet. Let's jump on into it. Vishnu Vardhan Chikoti, Senior SRE Manager at Fanatics, is here to talk about Enterprise SRE Adoption Framework. I'm going to speak about a new Enterprise SRE Adoption Framework called Arctic. To learn about SRE, we have books, blogs and videos. I am now introducing a framework which will further simplify the SRE adoption at enterprises. Microsoft SQL Server on AWS is the next talk by Asif Mujavar, Specialist Solutions Architect at AWS. Hi folks, um, I'm excited to talk about Microsoft SQL Server high availability and the disaster recovery options on AWS. Often people think uh, when we move the workloads to cloud and we will that means we will lose flexibility and options for availability and the disaster recovery will be very limited. Well, it's actually the opposite. And this is what we're going to cover and dive deeper into these options during the session. So, see you there, folks. Rafa Oleshko, Cloud Native Tech Lead at Hazelcast, will introduce five levels of high availability. I will discuss the trade-offs for bringing up your high availability level in your system. Feel invited. Pragmatic Site Reliability Engineering for Kubernetes in the Cloud is the next talk by Joshua Arvin Ladd, CTO of NewWorks Interactive Labs. I will talk about Site Reliability Engineering for Kubernetes in the Cloud, and I will share 10 practical tips on how to get that to work in your company. The Lessons Learned track is the last one today. Introducing top new CNCF projects to look out for with Annie Talvasto. Cloud Native Technologies Marketer at CAS.ai. So CSCF, uh, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, has brought to you such fan favorites like Kubernetes and Prometheus. And in this session, I will be taking you through some cool new projects. So the talk is really compact and has two demos, and I will give you inspiration and ideas so that you can, for example, discover new technologies and tools that you can use in your future projects, as well be the coolest kid in the block by being up to date with the latest and the greatest. JJ Asgar will talk about migrating a monolith to cloud native and the stumbling blocks you don't know about. Thank you so much for having me, and I really look forward to this talk because these are lessons learned. Things that I've seen and things that I've you know, come across as a developer advocate and as a cloud native expert. So hopefully you'll learn something too. And uh, I look forward to hopefully seeing y'all in 3D one day soon. Coming up next, we have Reliability Nirvana, a session by Daniel Sellens, the co-founder of Batch. 
Over the years, I've spent a lot of time working with different architectures and uh, all of them have their own pros and cons, but there is one architecture in particular that I feel like has more pros than well, most of the other ones, and that is event-driven. And during my talk, I plan on doing a deep dive on this architecture pattern and uh, just show you why it might be a good choice for your next distributed system project. See you there. Noah Barkey and Shimon Tolz from Daytree will tell you what they learned after reading over 100 Kubernetes postmortems. Hi everyone, I'm Noah. I'm Shimon. Shimon, what would you say if I tell you that one misconfiguration in Kubernetes can take down an entire cluster and that it happened to Google, Spotify, Airbnb, Toyota Connection, and lots of lots of other companies. I'll tell you that managing Kubernetes can be tough, and I'd like to learn how to prevent that from happening. Amazing. Join us to what we've learned from reading 100 plus Kubernetes postmodems. Robert Barron, AIOps, ChatOps, and SRE at IBM, is here to talk about microservices above the cloud. I'm going to be talking about the lessons that I've been able to learn from the history of space exploration, specifically the history of the International Space Station, its operations and development, and how relevant they are to modern site reliability engineering and development in the cloud today. So lessons from above the cloud relevant to what's happening in the modern cloud itself. How OneScap reduced their public API response by 86%? Introducing Raunak Sharma. Senior Software Engineer at Cardup. Hey folks, I'll be sharing about my time uh, at OneSub when we successfully managed to reduce the public API response time by 86%. It will consist of uh, how uh, situations which led us to that stage, lessons learned, what were the fixes, and uh, yes, most importantly, I hope that it will be beneficial for you. Sound interesting, right? I'll see you in the talk. Ricardo Castro, senior SRE at Farfetch'd, is here to answer the ultimate question. GitOps, yeah or nay? After several years of working as a developer, I started working into operations roles, and nowadays I'm a senior site reliability engineer. So I'm mostly focused on production infrastructure and make them reliable. So one of the ways to actually achieve those kinds of reliability is to use an approach like GitOps. So this is what my talk is going to focus about. We're going to see what GitOps is about, some of the advantages uh, that it has, and we're actually going to see a demo of a tool that does delivery of applications to Kubernetes clusters. The last, but definitely not least, talk at the conference is by Andrew Robinson, Principal Solutions Architect at AWS. Hi folks, in my session I'm going to be talking about fault isolation using shuffle sharding and how we can use this as a mechanism to distribute user requests into our system so that the impact of any failures that happens is reduced and only impacts a subset of those customers or users that are coming in. And that's all we got for you today at Conf42 SRE 2021. As always, big thank you to our speakers, sponsors, and partners for making this whole thing possible. So what happens next? We are going to live stream keynotes one after another on our YouTube channel after this video terminates. If you want to make sure you don't miss anything, please refer to the schedule on the website of the conference. All other talks will be available for free or SVP, so you need to subscribe to get the VOD link and then you can watch them all at your own pace. But you know, the conference is not only about education, it's also about connecting and meeting new people. So make sure to join our Discord server to interact with other attendees and speakers, ask questions and have some fun. So I hope to see you there in a minute. That was Mark. Thank you so much.